Hey folks, uh, this is Shock, and boy do I have something exciting to tell you. Uh, last night, I got invited to go to a giant stick'em chat room. Hold on. Make sure this guy don't get out in front of me. Where there was tons of atheists there. It was an atheist chat room, and I got invited there. Now, um, you have heard of Brett Keane? If I'm pronouncing that right he's an atheist I guess I think he's more agnostic if you ask me because he does believe it's possible for God to exist he just doesn't know so Brett's really an agnostic uh, he's not an atheist but he calls himself an atheist but he's really not the definition if you say that God could exist but you don't know for sure you're an agnostic so Brett my buddy my friend you're an agnostic. Welcome to the world of agnosticism. But let's get on the throttle, and I want to tell you what happened. Brett was kind enough to uh, challenge Venom Fang X and I. Now, I received an email. Let me tell you the whole story. I received an email. And by the way, we're going to be switching freeways to a much faster freeway than this in a couple of minutes, maybe about four minutes or so. Um, so let's get over here all the way. I received an email from my friend Tally on YouTube and he's like, hey Shock, you know, you're challenged to, you're challenged, which I thought it was a debate when someone says that Brett Keane's challenging you. I'm like, okay, great, a debate challenge because I, I love debate. But when I started um, conversing with Brett, he goes, no, 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 I don't want to debate you. And, and I literally begged for a debate and he did not want to debate me so I go well then what type of challenge is that you know what do you want me to do he goes well why don't you I want you to come into your uh, my chat room he says and I want you to you know give me reasons why God exists why Christianity is true etc so I was really looking forward to a debate you know I mean it looks really awesome when you're able to see Christianity versus atheism side by side. Hey. 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 Look at all the hay. Don't wanna, I hope one of these hay things don't fall out. Let me get over here. Okay, finally we get the faster freeway. So what happens is I must have asked Brett like at least five or six times, please debate me. He would not. He refuses to debate me. Fine. What can I do? I got to respect that. So, let me go around this truck. Hold on. Let's see which lane he's going. This is where I give it throttle. There we go. Getting buffeted by the wind. This truck. Yes. This freeway rocks. we're going down there so um all right so he basically doesn't want to debate me he refuses my debate challenge so I wasn't even going to go to the room but then I got a epiphany I thought maybe when I get there I could challenge any of the atheists to a debate aha and I thought as I tap my finger to my formerly Bible-speaking mouth, I thought, hmm, this could be a good plan. This could be very good. So, but out of respect to Brett, I know he didn't want to debate me, so I asked him, I said, can I ask questions of anybody, you know, when I get into the room? And, you know, that question could be, do you, do you want to debate me, right? So if he says yes, you can ask questions, and that allows me without breaking the rules, to ask if any atheist wanted to bathe. So I'm like, this is gonna be epic. If he says yes, I can go into this room with all these atheists and challenge them mano to mano to a debate. So I asked Brett, he emails me back and he says, yes, I could ask any questions. Oh yes. So I, I said, oh, I'm gonna show up then, even though he refused to debate me, I'm gonna show up. So, 
I uh, get home from work last night. I had to give it a little bit more throttle than I usually do because um, I wanted to get there before it gets too late in breath stick in room. So I get there and I go in there packed. The room is packed full of atheists. So uh, Brett gets on the uh, mic and he says, now I want you guys to be polite because I told Brett, I go, I, I have so much proof and evidence that atheism is wrong and so many very good arguments for the existence of God. Can I get 25 minutes? Give me 25 minutes. I can even talk longer than that. I mean, I, I can go on and on with all types of proof and evidence that atheism is wrong and God exists, right? But he says, yeah, you can take 25 minutes. So this was epic. 25 minutes nonstop of me showing why atheism is full of crapola and why God does exist. So I start speaking and I'm going through it. And um, so I, it, you know, tell everyone there, thanks for having me. I hope someone recorded it. It was, it was epic to be able to see this. And so at the very start, I asked my debate challenge, because there's tons of atheists in there. I said, is anyone here willing to debate? Let's turn this into a debate, because I know Brett didn't want to debate. Me. So it was quiet for a while, and finally this guy, E. Billy something, he, he said he'll debate me, and E. Billy was an atheist. And something happened, E. Billy said like his cat was attacking his kid or something. E. Billy had a kid or some children, so he had to take care of that. So, But anyways, it, no big deal because I, I was the first one to start the debate. So I go through my argument, the cosmological argument, how the universe began to exist. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, it has a cause. And I posited that it cannot be a natural cause because matter, time, space, and energy are not infinite. We know they had a beginning. I went to the teleological argument. I talked about the fine-tuned universe, about 50 fine-tuned constants, even the ratios to each other, have to be exquisitely fine-tuned, which this reeks of intelligent design. It was not the product of dumb luck or chance or physical necessity, therefore it has to be due to design. I talked about objective moral values, how I just don't see how we get objective moral values from the animal kingdom. When a lion kills a zebra, he's not really killing it, see, there's no objective values in the animal kingdom. When a, when a bird swoops down and uh, kills a fish, he's not really killing it, there's no objective values in the animal kingdom. When another bird steals the fish from the first bird's beak. He's not really stealing it. See, there's no objective values in the animal kingdom. <laughs> so I go through that. I go through, I go, but we clearly see objective values. If you believe, like I do, that rape is always wrong, then you must believe that objective values exist. The person that says rape is okay is just as wrong as the man that says two plus two equals five. Lawrence Krauss is wrong. I talked about the historicity of Jesus Christ, the empty tomb, the post-mortem appearances of Jesus after his death, crucifixion, and his resurrection, and hold on, my nose. Hit. I talked about where did this origin of the disciples' belief come from? They clearly believed that they saw Jesus alive. I talked about Garth Ludimann, who's an atheist. Uh, New Testament scholar, he even admits that the disciples had eyewitness accounts of Jesus Christ after Jesus' death. He said it can't be denied, ladies and gentlemen. I go through all this and more. I talk about how atheism, on, the, on atheism, not my argument, mind you, this is what atheists will tell you, it all leads to death. There is no objective purpose to an atheist life. Everything's subjective, and it all leads to death. The room didn't like it when I said this, but I said it anyways. I said, on atheism, the best thing you can get out of it 
when you close the book on atheism and you look how your life ends as an atheist, it all ends with death, stinking, rotting, pathetic, sour, death. <laughs> it's true. They believe the universe is going to die out. They don't believe God's going to save the universe from dying. They believe humanity is going to die. So on atheism's own argument, the best it can offer you is death. Stinking, sour, pathetic, rotting death. You could have heard a pin drop when I said that. I could even see them on their cameras, their faces, the, the sweet, cuddly, huggable atheist faces look real sad as they realize that atheism is a bunch of crapola that ends in death. I talked about all of this, and I also talked about um, oh, well, let me, uh, I only got a few more moments, uh, four minutes or so, so let's get to what E. Billy said. E. Billy lost the debate horribly. Hold on. I got something in my eye. E. Billy lost the debate horribly. He said the universe is like a book. I kid you not, a libro, a book. And he said... You know how you have the first page of the book? That's where it all begins. So he was trying to say there was no God. In other words, the universe is the book, and the beginning of the universe is page one. You can't posit a God. That's what he said. And then I destroyed his argument. I said, well, the book didn't just appear there. The book is a product of intelligent design. McFly! <laughs> McFly! I had to say to the atheist. So by using a book that, which is the product of intelligent design, not the product of random happenstance, he pwned himself. I got E. Billy under cross-examination to confess and admit, you all heard it, you all heard it. He admitted that Jesus did exist and the disciples really believed that they saw Jesus resurrect from the dead. He admitted it, that's good enough for me. He could not debunk the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, the historicity of Jesus Christ's objective values, nor did he deny that atheism ends in stinking, rotting, sour, pathetic death. And then I ended on this. I said, look, it's clear that Christian theism has won this debate tonight. And it all boils down to this. What do you want? Do you want a life that ends in death? Stinking, rotting, sour, pathetic death? This is what atheists believe it is. It. This is not my argument as a Christian even. I believe in life. It is the atheists that believe it all is a death. No objective purpose. I talked about how atheists have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. How Sam Harris said that atheism has such a horrible reputation you shouldn't even call yourself an atheist anymore. I talked about how if you go to the atheism page on Wikipedia, it says that atheism leads to moral relativity and leaves one with the life lacking purpose and, and it can leave one with a life that is meaningless and miserable. It says it right there on the atheism Wikipedia page. And then I ended it like this. It was epic. After E. Billy lost the debate and Christian theism won. What's that, like 53 debates now we've won? Let me get around this guy. I said, look, it all boils down to life or death. If you want death, if you want a life that just ends with stinking, rotting, pathetic, sour death with no objective purpose, choose atheism. It will deliver that to you. <laughs> but if you want life, choose Christianity. I go, I go, can you see why I left atheism, you guys? I used to be an atheist. It's so stupid. Only a fool says within his heart there is no God. And I ended it like this. I said, look, if you want life, accept Christianity. Jesus said, look, I have come to bring you life and life more abundantly. You want death? Choose atheism. You want life? Choose Jesus Christ. As for this ex-atheist, now Christian, I have chosen life and life more abundantly. God bless you guys. I love you. This is shock. Hey, listen, don't forget to click below this video. You can go right to our conference room. You can listen to our radio show. 
that we did on exposing the myths, lies of evolution.